In this video, I will show you how to edit like Imperial and we'll create this really, really cool 3D map. And I actually love the Imperial channel. I love his style. It just makes me really happy as an editor. Now, if you're also a happy editor and you want to become a better editor, then do join the Social Creator Club Pro. In this exclusive community, you will learn advanced editing techniques. You will learn how to get clients. I will also give you clients. You can participate in the editing challenge. And of course, join a community full of amazing editors that are all helping each other out. Link is in the description and then let's just jump into it. So I'm here in After Effects and we can just create a new composition. Let's just make this 4K 25 frames per second and press OK. Now I'm not sure if Imperial made this in After Effects or Blender, but this effect can be done in After Effects. I'm going to first create a new shape. I'm going to go to the rectangle tool and I'm going to change the fill to black. Press OK and make sure the stroke is set to off. I'm going to zoom out a bit and then I'm just going to draw a simple square shape. This doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered. We're going to move it anyway. So let's zoom in a bit and I'm going to add a grid effect to this. So you can just go to your effects and presets and search for grid. Drag this on or double click on the grid and we now have this grid effect on it. It's actually that easy. Now the size from I'm going to change to width slider because this will make it uniform, basically make it square. And I'm going to drag this up a bit and we probably need to adjust this later on anyway. So we don't have to make this perfect, but just so my eyes don't hurt. <laughs> I'm going to go to project and I'm going to drag these two assets into our comp. Now, of course, like always, if you are in the pro community, you will get the template of this, including the assets. But if you're not ready to make the investment yet and you just want to follow this tutorial, you can download the assets in the free community. Link of that is also in the description. So I'm going to drag this USA map to the top and we actually have a beautiful map. And this can be any map. You can use any country. I'm just using the US now. And I'm going to go to layer auto trace now you might have to change the channel mode i'm gonna change it to red and there we see our masks being generated maybe to green is that better or blue or luminance i think luminance is even better let's put it on luminance make sure the time span is set to current frame it should work but let's just press ok let's see what it makes and this actually looks really really good i'm actually really happy with this now we just need to open this Go into the masks and as you can see a lot of masks will be generated now you can just click around to see which one but you can also click on the edge and actually if you drag your mouse down and select something you can also see which are selected now we're not going to use all of these states but let's see which one we can remove i'm going to just select this and let's see if we can remove these islands we can just press backspace to delete them let's also delete that one then i also see one in the back i think that's this one yeah there we go i'm also gonna delete these bottom ones perfect and we're gonna find out which one is the outline because we need that one for later uh, let's see i think it's here on the edge let's open this layer again uh, yeah i think it's because it's not 44 uh, it's i think 57 yeah there we go this is always a bit puzzling around this is different with every map but as you can see, this is how you can find it out. Now you can actually right click, rename, and we can call this outline. So we know for sure that this is like the outside and the other ones, we don't know them. <laughs> we actually don't know these uh, these ones. I'm also not gonna rename them or something, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna remove the one at the back. Now, sometimes if you're lucky, it's like the last mask. Uh, in this case, we're not lucky. So let's just select this left bottom so you can see which one it is. 56 there we go make sure that the whole mask is selected so just 56 let's delete that and there we go we removed the back plate now turn the other png map off and we just have our masks beautiful like a beautiful outline this is what you want now what i'm going to do is i'm going to just duplicate this layer and i'm going to call one just outline country and this is going to be states and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna delete the outline mask in this one and i'm just gonna make sure that the other one let's see where it is masks and here we're gonna delete all the masks so just hold shift and click on the last one and hold command or control on windows to deselect the outline and then press delete and we just have our outline this is exactly what we want now i'm gonna duplicate this one more time by pressing command d or control d on windows and i'm gonna call this outline country mat just like that perfect now let's turn the mat off for now and let's turn the states off for now and we just have the outline country then we're going to go to effects and presets and i'm going to add the stroke effect to this so you can just go to generate stroke double click while you have the layer selected and then just press all masks then paint cell change that to untransparent 
This will get rid of the white part of this. And now we can increase the brush size by a lot. And as you can see, you can make it really thick and that's not really the style. So let's just make this really thin. I would say around maybe five or six. Change the color to like a cool dark red, maybe something like this. And now if we deselect this, this already looks really cool as you can see. And the cool thing about this is that we can animate this. So here you can see the end. We can actually just animate the end or even the start. It's a bit difficult to see now because you also see the mask. We can actually disable the mask view by clicking on this toggle mask and shape button. We'll disable the mask just temporary. So we can just see what's happening here. As you can see, I can animate the end and it will scribble around, which is a really cool effect. And we can, of course, also animate the start a bit. So for example, we can set them both to 50. So we can just type in 50% and 50%. Set a keyframe for both and then go a couple seconds in. And then we can set the start to zero and the end to 100%. And this will just create a cool animation, as you can see which already looks really cool, right? And the funny thing is we can actually just copy this effect over. So we can just copy the stroke, Command C, go a bit further in your timeline, of course, Control C on Windows, and then Control V or Command V on the states. Let's turn that also on. And then what will happen is we'll use all the masks to fill in the states, which is such a cool effect as you can see. And now we can of course just delete states that we don't want. We can also turn off the stroke sequentially which will basically make them appear all at once. Just a, a really cool effect, as you can see. We can change the color, but for now I'm gonna disable the states because we need to add another effect, and that is a glow. Now you can add a normal glow or a deep glow. I think a deep glow works even better, but a normal glow can also work. We just have to change the radius a bit and change the intensity a bit, something like this. Glow intensity, I'll set that on one and glow radius i'll set that on 150 that will already create this really really cool effect right and we can of course copy this over to the other layer now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use this rocky background and i'm gonna select this as a track mat so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna drag this track mat to the outline country mat this will just make sure that it will just be applied to this country now i'm gonna scale it down by pressing s so there's just gonna be a bit more texture and I'm also gonna go and search for the exposure effect and drag that on our beautiful rock formation. I'm gonna drag down the exposure bit. I might even add a curves color correction to this. So we can just drag the uh, highlights down a bit. Let's drag the shadows up. And we're getting already this really cool texture. Now it's not exactly the same, but I think this already looks super nice. Now we can also see the grid in the background. I also think the grid can actually be a bit less bright. So I'm gonna change the color of the grid to be a bit more dimmed. Something like this, like a dark gray that already looks really nice. This already looks amazing in my opinion. So let's stylize this a bit more. We're gonna add a new 3D camera. So go to layer new camera. I'm gonna change the type to a two node camera. I'm gonna enable depth of field. And we can change these settings later. Preset 50 millimeter, press OK. Press OK. Then let's go to layer, camera, create orbit null. We will need this for later on. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make these layers 3D. So go to telco switches mode if you don't see this 3D icon. And then I'm just gonna drag this down. Now we need to pre-comp this shape layer uh, because otherwise this effect won't work. So let's go to layer, pre-compose. Let's call this grid. There we go. Make a 3D and I'm gonna add a reptile to this because we're gonna create an infinite grid. Now go into the camera, press P for position. Let's zoom this in a bit. Let's drag this last value so it zooms in and let's move this out a bit. So there's like more depth to this image. And now the cool thing is because we created this 3D orbit null, we can literally just rotate this camera by changing the Z axis and it will go in a perfect circle around this, uh, which is actually a really cool effect in my opinion. So we can just keyframe the Z rotation and let's just drag this out to the beginning and let's go a couple seconds later and let's set this then to maybe five degrees. So there's this really cool motion. Now what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna go into the camera and I'm gonna go into the camera options. As you can see, you have a focus distance here and you see this aperture. Now what we can do is turn this aperture to something really, really high. This will make this blurry, but this will, this actually all makes sense in a bit. I'm gonna change the focus distance, and I think that's this one axis. And actually, you can turn the aperture even more, like even higher. 
for example, to like 3000 or something. And as you can see, it will create this really cool blur at the bottom and at the top. It just looks really cool, right? Now, as you can see, our grid isn't big enough. I'm also going to fix that. I'm going to go into our grid, then our reptile, and then the expand up. We just need to increase that. doesn't even have to be much. And then I'm going to go to layer, new, adjustment layer. And then we'll add a vignette to this. CC vignette in the effects and presets panel. And then you have this vignette here. Now I'm going to set this really high. So the amount to thousands and the angle of view to maybe 20. So the edges are almost black. Now you might see some spots, those won't actually be rendered. Now we can of course also add labels to this. Now to finish this off, we can of course turn our states back on. I would actually adjust this a bit, so maybe the brush size to three. And then we can also go into the states and then remove the masks that we don't want. And to add the labels, this is simply just some text animation, right? We can just go into the text, type something, and then as long as we make this 3D2 and we press R for rotation, make sure the X rotation is set to 90 degrees. And then we can actually move this up and move this up. And as you can see, the text isn't really visible because it's blurry or it's not in focus. So then we have to go into the camera and just decrease the aperture a bit so we can at least read the text, right? Or we can even select the camera and select the text by holding command. And then we can right click camera and then link focus distance to layer. Now you can also see here the focus distance is now set to 4200 and even if we set our aperture really high like we had it on 3000 the text will still be sharp. And then you get something like this. As you can see, it's such a cool effect. And if you just change the colors or change the textures a bit, you know how to create these really cool looking maps. But of course, you can even use this on an icon laying on this grid. I'm just giving some ideas here, right? Now, like I've mentioned at the beginning of the video, do join the Social Creator Club Pro if you want to become a better editor. You will also have one-on-one -on -one contact with me, so you can always ask creative ideas. Link for the Pro community is in the description. Then, like always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and then I'll see you next time. Bye.